Hello and welcome back, everyone, to another exciting episode of Octopath Traveler 2. We are going to finish off some uh, some of the side story that we haven't finished before we go to the final chapter of the game. Uh, the first thing that I want to finish is that we never really beat uh, Uranus in the fighting tournament. So... I want to try that. Okay, Hickory. Definitely Hickory. Your attention please, this stage is set for our next battle. First up, our challenger. His blade glimmers against the fierce blue sky. It's Hickory! And you already know who will greet our challenger, the greatest fighter this arena has ever known. The Unbowed Blade, a cut above, it's Uranus. Well, well, this ought to be a fierce battle. I am Uranus, reigning champion of this arena. Here's to fair fight. Future hinges on this battle. Oh my goodness. Okay, I did grind. Uh, all of my characters, they're all now 90s. Uh, it took me three days and I'm, I'm just gonna try to fight the boss with level 90 because I don't I don't think I could grind more to 99. We'll see. You're in for it now. I've got you. My turn. Okay. I'm gonna use Vengeful Blade. Choose your next move wisely. <laughs> I return your wrath twofold. Here I come. I'm gonna abide. I return your wrath to Oops. for the prize. Oh wow, Uranus. You're not that strong. Champion's Bell. Wow. That's enough. We have a victor. Show us your appreciation for such a thrilling fight. <laughs> a resounding defeat indeed. Your technique was flawless. Ooh, prevent surprise attack from enemies. This is actually would have been great <laughs> for me grinding. Should we learn windswept slash? But you are only eight star. I think another thing that I want to find out. Uh, no, it's in Candlebrine. There was a nun in Candlebrine who's level ten. I always wanted to know what's her deal and whether or not yeah what is divine protection is it good if I must very well but I must say as a sparring partner I have little to offer and much to oh learn now it begins. Choose your next move wisely. Ooh, you used magic, huh? This will be tough. You're in for it now. You've been exposed. And you're only weak to spear. And you use mental augmentation. Right. I've oh, failed you. That's hard. Impressive. Okay, let me test something.
Raise your weapon. On your guard. Do I get shit? How's this? Oh, okay. <laughs> I still have much to learn. You still have much to learn. Grant a single ally one turn of invincibility, but it costs a hundred though. Oh, a hundred out cold. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, there's also some things that. Wait, I'm gonna need Throne for this. All right, we have reached our destination here. Uh, we have Yomi. She has one of the. Uh, records that we could uh, get. Oh, you also have protector's vestments. By the light of heart. And we're now missing only one, I believe. And I think it's in New Delta. Was it in New Delta? One is from Gil. No, we already have that. Was it the Gil one that I haven't got? So one is in the shop, number 28, you guys remember? And I believe Gil has the last one. Yeah, Gil on keys. Oh, record collector. Obtain all records. Okay. Now I think we're ready. So I'm gonna meet you guys at the site where we're gonna have probably one of our toughest fight. I'll see you then. Okay, so... Oh my god, the gate of finish is just as difficult that's the first game I might have to grind a little bit more. So I decided to try the other one. Let's try for the journey for the dawn. See if it's easier. Hopefully. <laughs> but anyway, the journey for the dawn draws near. If you proceed, the actions you can take will be limited for a while. Any tales you wish to experience are best completed before the journey for the dawn, but the choice is yours. You can still save your progress after this point, but saving in a different slot is recommended. Hmm, the fire won't catch. Well, let's give it another go, Agnia. Every failure brings us one step closer to success, eh? So this is what the right. upper art keep trying. looks like, right? Pretty cute. We've brought firewood, you two. Thank you so much, Casty. Be careful. A fire's not worth getting wounded over. If it's flames you want, I can do it. <laughs> Not so fast, partner. How else are we gonna work up a sweat? If you insist on being so... inefficient. We're back. We didn't find any beasts lurking about. But we did find this water. Ah, <sighs> goodness. Physical labor has never really agreed with me. <laughs> There's nothing like a good meal after a hard day's work, Timonos. 
Speaking of which, I wonder how the hunters are faring. Mm. Heave! Heave! Ta-da! It's not a feast without a main course! <laughs> a feast? This is enough meat for a butcher shop. <laughs> I didn't think hunting would be so much fun. <laughs> You've got the stuff that great hunters are made of, Throne. Ochet would know. Oh, are you retiring from the cleaning business, Throne? Quiet, detective. Well then, I believe that's most everything. All that remains is... Everyone's counting on us to light up their evening. It's time to get serious, Particio. Right you are, Agnia. Come on, Fire. You can do it! We'll show this pile of sticks who's boss. This will be a night to remember. I think you might be right. Now we feast! Ah, this is what the cover art is from. Exactly. Agnes dancing, oh shit, eating jerky. This is Even the seating arrangement. Nice. Truth be told, this isn't where I imagined my journey would take me. I know what you mean. As do I. <laughs> That's what makes journeys worth taking. You never know where you'll end up. Bless you, Hikari. Are you cold? <laughs> Doubtless someone in Ku is gossiping about you at this very moment. Perhaps they miss me as much as I miss them. My friends back home. I've learned much in our travels, and I hope I can use it to help my friends and nation. This is kind of cute with all of the eight characters <laughs> interacting together. Which is what missing from the first game. Thank you. Even after this journey ends, I'm going to keep on dancing around the world until I can dance no more. Mind if I tag along? With Particio and Rock backing us, we can hop on a steam locomotive and bring smiles to every corner of the world. That sounds amazing. With one of those, you could save your feet for the important part, dancing. And I... I could extend a helping hand to places I've never even dreamt of. Will you keep on with Heirs Apothecaries, Casty? Oh yeah. There's only you left. I want to resume my search for like-minded allies. Now that's a dream I can get behind. Yeah, me too. I'm afraid there's one problem with this plan of yours. If you consider how many people there are in this world, then... There's no room for logic in the realm of dreams, Professor. <laughs> Do we know it? What'll you do, Oswald? I have some unfinished business to conclude. There are many answers that have yet to be found. Is that so? It's writ plain on your face. You're worried about your daughter. 
There's one answer found. And what of you, Tamanos? Have you found yours? Almost. It's like a piece of meat stuck in between my teeth. Ugh, I know what you mean. I hate that. So, something's still troubling you, in other words? Hmm. Precisely. So, your days as a detective aren't over yet, then. Well, I'm here if you need an assistant. Assuming you can afford me, that is. My goodness! You're awfully greedy for an <laughs> assistant. Even if I said yes, I'm sure you have your own path in mind. I do. I want to go somewhere far away. To a place that isn't on any map. A place no one knows about. Ooh. A place none have laid eyes upon. You all have such big hopes and dreams. I just want to feast every day. And to keep the people of Totohaha safe, of course. Hmm. Should I be aiming higher? Ah, seems like you've got some meat stuck in your teeth. Don't worry, Ochet. That's a fine dream. Suppose it is. Look, a shooting star. <sighs> I wonder what tomorrow will bring. Oh, is tomorrow never... never comes? Oh, the, the, the torches. Wait, where is it? I don't remember where where they are located. Oh, okay, this one I know. This one's Flame Church. Yep. The sun never rises. What was that? I had an odd dream. There was a dark place, somewhere completely unfamiliar. And a dark fire was blazing. I... I saw the same thing. Uh, wait, wait. Are you yanking my chain? I saw it too. We all had the same dream. Could it be a coincidence? No, definitely not a coincidence. I very much doubt that. Hmm. I feel as if I've seen that place somewhere before. Huh, I slept like a baby full of milk, though. Huh, is it still night? Strange. Dawn should be upon us soon. Hmm. Hmm. We should patrol the area. 
I can barely see a thing. Huh? The stars... They're all gone. And the sky is pitch black. Something is amiss. This is no natural nightfall. Oh, Chet? I felt this. It's just like before. This is shadow. On your guard, everyone! Something's coming, and it isn't friendly. It's here. The future hinges on this battle. It's my turn now! My turn. My turn. You're in for it now. Who's next? My turn. What to do? There! Now it begins. Allow me. Who's next? What was that? and I have seen beasts like that before. At the time, we had no idea what they were. Their nature. I've seen them too. The black aura resembles the one true magic wielded by Harvey. He called it the Shadow. The Shadow? <sighs> What is it? I cannot say for certain. Not now, in any case. Mysterious monsters. Just what we need. We know next to nothing of this phenomenon. Not even the extent of its reach. Does this shroud cover only this forest? Or is it much larger? Nothing for it, but to check for ourselves. On that, I agree. Well, we need to do something. So we need to visit those locations? Unfortunately, we lack the information to know just what that something is. Further research is required. Hmm. I must find an answer to this conundrum. Okay, so what exactly are we supposed to do? Uh, Eternal Night has descended upon the world. The travelers decide to set out on a final journey to find a cause. Your destination will not be shown on the radar. Search for clues and find your heading. Eight travels. You can change your formation at any time in the main menu. We walk a stride your fellow travels on an epic journey. We've been waiting a while and the sun's still ain't rising. What in the world is going on? I don't know, but it's nothing good, that's for sure. If those strange monsters earlier were a product of this darkness, then we must figure out the cause of this long night and soon. I couldn't agree more. First, we search for clues. Now you're talking, so where do we start? Come on now, you must have some idea, right? Flame Church. What do you mean? I mean, other areas shrouded in the shadow. There are more? I cannot say for sure, but it's the only heading we have. A fair point, standing still will get us nowhere. Let's start by searching for other places blanketed in darkness. 
Alright, looks like it's time to hit the dusty trail once again. Oh, oh, okay. There it is. Bells on ruins. It's quiet. Too quiet. But this smell... It's the scent of humans. They're frightened. Hiding. Someone's coming. Mint. Mint. Is that you, Temenos? Out for a stroll in a place like this? You always did have the habit of sticking your nose in places it doesn't belong. A friend of yours, Temenos? In a manner of speaking, but something's odd. Failed to see what was in front of you. The shadow is ever by thy side. <laughs> Just what are you? This is an inquisition. Refuse to answer and... We need to coerce. Attempting to conquer others with threats of violence will always fail. Those who are subdued by strength cannot help but rebel. To conquer them, truly conquer them, you must subjugate their hearts and minds. Hearken to the shadows in their hearts. What are you talking about? People are desperate for a place to belong. Give it to them, and they cannot bear to live anywhere else. And then, their hearts and minds are yours. Their hearts and minds? Humans are foolish by their very nature. Centuries pass, and yet... They remain the same. Bold words for someone so young. <laughs> Surrender yourself not unto silent dusk. For the light shall fade. And soon, night shall fall. The teachings of the Moonshade Order. No, it can't be. Since you are so dogged in your search for the truth, allow me to help you. So are you possessed or were you always the My evil? My true name is Arcanet. And I am the leader of the Moonshade Order. The same order that slaughtered the call. Oh my god. All so that I could steal the flame. That's impossible. The massacre of the Call was decades ago, and the Moonshade Order's origins are older still. It's not impossible. There are old souls out there that hide behind youthful faces. Thanks to Kaldina's efforts, the Book of Night is now in my possession. Oh my god, Mint. <laughs> that girl was so eager to be a puppet. She didn't realize the strings were held by her sworn enemy.
The Pontiff knew who you were. He was going to tell me, but his life was cut short. I had hoped you would be more stricken. How dull. Such has ever been your nature. Your face always a placid mask. But I suppose it matters not. This world's end draws nigh. That staff... Once, long ago, night was invited into the world. But a loathsome few drove it away. Those events will not repeat themselves again. You stole the futures of untold innocence. Oh my god, man, I will not expect... Then you should thank me. Or, I guess I should say Arcanet. This world is cruel. Monstrous. With not a single mote of joy to be found amongst the misery. Don't you see? Roy, Pontiff Yorg. Yes, and even Crick. How dare you mutter his name? They knew the beauty of a dawn that would never come. Quiet. I won't allow you to sully their names with such blasphemy. You will answer for your sins, Arcanet. And I'll ensure the world they hoped for comes to pass. <laughs> At last, Temenos' mask falls off. Future Wait. On this oh, at least I have just thrown it with me. Here I go. Okay, you have only have 150,000. <sighs> Probably weak to light? No idea. Fire burns within you. Alright! Yes. Not fire. Here I come. It's over. Oh dear. <laughs> Cleaning time. You're too kind. Open book. Prepare yourself. Unleash the dagger attack on random foe three times. Blade of the Dead. Time to strike. My turn. I've got just the cure. Prepare yourself. Shit. You're in for it now. I've got you. Just two. Time. Shit. Honestly, I think it's magic. Okay, it is ice. Oh, yes. Skills. 
skillfully done, Athena. I'll end this. How's this? It's my turn now. Cleaning time. Flight time is over. Aver, Prince of Thieves! Here I go. Should I risk it? Look at these hands! Poison Slash! My journey Easy. will not end here. So maybe we're supposed to finish this first before we finish the side quest? So we arrive at this moment. Are you truly so desperate to see the dawn? I see now that the pontiff was not the true threat. It was you. Temenos. You, a dagger sharpened to a razor's edge. Claude's masterwork. You know Claude. <laughs> I can see it. A collar around that thin neck of yours. A collar? You will never be free. So are you the princess? And Claude is the prince in the story? <laughs> Even if I fall here, nothing will end. And there, always near. Soon, night shall fall. Farewell, Mint. Your days of meddling are over. Soon night shall fall. Hmm? From the looks of it, it already has. <sighs> if this isn't night, then... Should we try to go to the cathedral? Pansy's journal. Did you write this, or dare ask? I immediately ripped the book out of his grass and he shrank back a little surprised at my strength i couldn't believe that he of all people had gotten his hand on my hidden script odair had been acting from a young age and was already doing quite well for himself i too had longed for the stage since i was a child but ended up working at my parents candle shop instead even so i hadn't been able to give up on writing and become a secret pastime i hadn't shown my scripts to anyone though Afraid that their response would confirm just how talentless I was, I screwed my eyes shut in embarrassment, preparing myself for his ridicule of my silly script. But, would you mind if I perform this? He asked. I let out a strange gasp, completely caught off guard. It'll be a shame not to. Why don't we show it off at the next festival of grace? To taken aback by the proposal, I was overjoyed to know that someone appreciated my writing. I nodded in agreement and decided to make it a performance to remember. Despite it being Odnair's idea, I realized that I was even more excited than he was. I even began composing musical scores for the show. I love you, Mary. Those words caused my heart to race and my hands on the harp to stop. What's wrong? Odnair asked as he peered into my face with concern. I realized that he no longer looked like that brat who had tormented me with insects in our youth. Still, 
I knew that the words he spoke were not his own. I had been the one to write them, after all. Half a month before the Festival of Grace, his performance was all but perfect. I couldn't help but wonder when he found the time to practice after his normal work was through. I, on the other hand, was struggling to think of a fitting ending to the script and work late into the night. Unable to ignore my struggles, Odnair pulled me away from my desk and whisked me away into town late at night. The gods are all ours right now, he told me as we snuck into an empty church. Not long after, I was struck by inspiration, perhaps by the grace of the sacred flame. Odnair watched quietly as word upon word flow from the tip of my pen. By the time I was finished, dawn was breaking. As Odnair read my script, his face was more serious than ever and my heart pounded in my chest, though not out of nervousness. Once he finished, he smiled softly. Will you marry me? he asked and I let out another strange gasp. Had I written that line? No. This time, those words were Odnir's own. His proposals always had a way of bringing me unrivaled joy. My heart warmed at the sight of his smile and the thought of performing the script we had written together, how I wished the happiness would last us a lifetime. Alas, I watched as the cleric carried his casket and sobs filled the air around me. I lay him to rest with our script and his beloved yellow flower. No, I thought to myself, this wasn't the ending I had envisioned. The day after finishing the script, I woke up to find my love cold beside me. According to the apothecary, Odnair's heart had failed him. I wondered if work was to blame. Why hadn't I noticed? I killed him. I pushed him too hard. It was all my fault. All my fault. Unable to bear my guilt, I pushed his death from my mind and carried on as usual, but whenever I remember my beloved, I clenched my jaw so hard I thought my teeth would break. One day I found myself in front of the church, the same place Odnir and I swore our love to each other, and a single cleric came to speak with me. Sadness is something that builds up inside us. Holding it all in will do nothing but destroy you, she told me. Please, let it out. You don't need to endure it any longer. Moved by her warmth, I spoke of everything that I have buried deep inside of me. She listened to every word and, at the end, embraced me gently. All of my guilt and sadness were washed away by her kindness. Then one day, my feeling from Odnir disappeared, and that was left was her. One day, I saw her with another woman and feared that she would leave me. Knowing I had to secure my place in her world, I told her that I would do whatever she asked me. She smiled gently and responded and said, I want you to find the blue flames wherever they may be in this world. I left on my journey soon thereafter. My parents cried and tried to stop me, but I pushed them away. Unfortunately, I barely knew the area outside of my own home, let alone the whole world. Not long after, I met with a traveling troop. They claimed to be bringing smiles to every corner of the realm, so I joined them and the search began. That's how I found it, the blue flame she was looking for. It was on the isle at the edge of the world. I could only imagine how pleased she would be. I was sure she would let me stay at her side. Oh, how I adore Sister Min. I love you, Tansy, she said. Her warm voice and words reverberated in my head. She then handed me an old tome called the Book of Night and recommended that I read it. So I did right there and there. It was a story of a people who did not long to see the dawn. I would never read such an incredible tale before. As I looked up at its pages, she smiled at me. I realized that there was no greater happiness to be had than reading a wonderful book and seeing Sister Min smile. In my mind, no brighter dawn awaited. Yes, I have no need for the dawn. It can all end here and now. Wait, Tansy. From Agnia's story? A statue of Aber, Prince of Thieves. There are words carved to its base. O oh, inheritors of our will. Let the mirror shine and kindle a fire in your heart to chase away the darkness. A statue of Alfred, the flame bringer. There are words carved into its base. O inheritors of our will, let the mirror shine and kindle a fire in your heart and chase away the darkness. Try this. The sacred flame has been doused. Perhaps it can be rekindled with something.
Oh. Oh. The mirror reflects the memories of the sacred flame. Ah. Wake up, Tansy. Night has come. Wake up, Tansy. Night has come. Uh, sister Mint? Oh, I fell asleep without realizing it. <laughs> Do not worry. You must have been quite tired. You traveled far to see my wish granted. Sister Mint? I mean, Goddess? I would do anything if it brought me closer to you. <laughs> Your devotion is moving. You have gone far beyond my every expectation. And must be rewarded. Rewarded? I love you, Tansy. Huh? It's so dark. Where, where am I? What? My body? Child, oblivious until the very end. But this is what you wanted, is it not? It's not as if you desired to see the dawn. <laughs> the sacred flames have been snuffed out. Surrender yourself not unto silent dusk, for the light shall fade, and soon the world shall know the joy of a dawn that never comes. All who stand in my way shall be cast aside. I shall root out the travelers and bury that wretched mirror beneath the earth that it may never enkindle the flames again. The first sacred flame burns anew. So this is the night. Could this darkness she spoke of be Vide? Vide. Legends portray him as a god of fear and destruction, which means that the dawn must be I spoke with the children of this village not long ago. It seems there's going to be a concert tomorrow. Dulcinea is coming to entertain everyone with her dancing. Those children were waiting for the dawn with stars in their eyes. It was a beautiful sight like gemstones glittering in the dark. They see nothing but hope. Indeed, that's why I made a promise to them. A promise that I would steal back the dawn. You truly are able to come again. Is that meant to be a compliment? But of course. Now then, shall we get to work, Aber? Hmm, <laughs> there certainly is a lot of work to be done, more than I've ever done before. I cannot believe this, the sacred flame went out, even if only for a moment. No matter what happens, the sacred guard will protect the people and the church. That darkness is terrifying, damn it, I cannot stop shaking. Let's go this one. Because I think the warrior and the dancer should be this one, right? Is 
Statue of Seal Teach, Lady of Grace, there are words carved into this space. O oh, inheritors of our will, let the mirror shine and kindle the fire in your heart and chase away the darkness. I'll do what I must. Step aside. Ready? A statue of Bran the Thunderblade. There are words carved into the space. O oh, inheritors of our will, let the mirror shine and kindle a fire in your heart to chase away the darkness. Oh, that's right. Let me check something. Is Tansy from you? There's Dancer's Journal, Oboro's Journal, and Tansy's Journal. It was hope that drove me. Drove me to live. To survive. Drove me away from death's clutches. To guide others along the same path. But hope. Hope was a mistake. There is nothing worth living for. Nothing in this cruel, unsightly world. There is no dawn worth waiting for. What would you give to see the morrow, Lord Ageha? Kazan. Why did you betray us? Zan is also evil? You lifted up Lord Mugen to the throne. Then you tore him down from it. <laughs> An eagle must hide his talons. It was the only way to catch my true quarry. The Dark Blood Blade. The sacred treasure of Clan Ku. Not an easy thing to steal. Not so long as Mugen stood in my way. So I cut him down. With Hikari's sword. <sighs> you. What are you? For years I have hidden my intentions from Ku. My very name. But now you shall know it. Oboro. You are Oboro. All I did, I did to prevent the tide of darkness that waits on the morrow from reaching us. Within this blade slumbers the power of the shadow. The power to quench the flames. However, such a feat cannot be accomplished without a sacrifice. blood of Darkest. If not for its taint, we may have seen a desert free from the stain of crimson. And now, I end this. Mm. Hikari. Goodbye, old friend. This world's end calls to me. Soon, you shall have the world you envisioned. A world without bloodshed. For oblivion shall bring peace.
The second sacred flame burns new. Kazan. Mugen's rebellion, the raising of the city, even my ascent to the throne. Were they all just more of your plots? Were we all playing into your hands? How many of my friends die because of you? Hikari. Ever since I was a child, I spoke with him about the future I envisioned. A future without bloodshed. Were our ideals so different? Why did he do this? He aims to bring an end to the world. We have to stop him. Together. We will. We'll lead everyone toward dawn. The hunt is on! Oh, what the hell is this? Bring it on. Grotesque monster. Here's a little something for you. Right. Things are about to get sticky. I'm just getting warmed up. I don't want no trouble. What to do? What to do? Elementary. Ugh. Thinking time. Nice. Pierce the wings of frost. I'm just getting warmed up. My dear Steve, do our bits. Calculations complete. Fire. Burn. My prey awaits. Meet Seal Team, Lady of Grace. Might be no mercy, only pain. Arise, Alex. Over here! <laughs> Burst forth, mighty flames! Yeehaw! Oh. Don't understand! Obis Regalia! Huh? I'm 
just getting warmed up. Obis uh, uh, Regalia. No. Help them, Ice Storm. All according to plan. Nice one, Mr. Oswald. Coming right up. I need a. Now let me show you what I've learned. This is the answer. Oh, okay. Oof. I've gained valuable insight. Black Bow. So that was the first flame, huh? Have you heard of it before? Yeah, it came to life inside me. It was comforting and warm. It was then that I decided I wanted to protect the island. I always felt you had a heart warmer than most. <laughs> now I think I'm ready to take on something even bigger. I'm ready to protect the whole world. That's what hunters should do after all. I feel the same way as you do. I want to extend a helping hand to everyone in need during this endless night. <laughs> you're an you are an apothecary everyone can count on. And let's do it together. Let's keep everyone safe. Gladly, Oshet. I'm honored to have you by my side. Statue of Daughter, the Charitable. There are words carved into this space, O oh, inheritors of our will. Let the mirror shine and kindle a fire in your heart and chase away the darkness. Statue of Drafendi, the Huntress. I think it's pretty much the same. Scarlet Moon waxes and the first flame wanes. <laughs> oh my god, finally the Dark Hunter, huh? This world is not but hunters and their prey. Not Opione, I hope. Just as Cataracta fell to my bow, just as Glacius' egg shattered before my might. The Dark Hunter sets forth once again, and my aim will not falter. Under the gaze of the Scarlet Moon, I shall fulfill the great wish. Petricor. <sighs> You must be quivering with joy, for your time has come at last. <sighs> Ten years ago, I scooped you up, let you live. It was all for this moment. The darkness in our hearts is fed by anger, hatred, resentment, and jealousy. Our basest instincts. As that darkness grows deeper, so too does the shadow grow powerful. Few can stand against a beast whose heart has been drowned in darkness. A beast such as you. Who is Petra Corrigan? Long have I waited for the darkness within you to become black as night. So that maddening flame could be smothered forevermore. With my lifeblood, I shall call down the night. Lifeblood? <laughs> Make of my flesh an offering. And banish all that stands to oppose us. 
give meaning to your miserable life. So she sacrificed herself? Even now, their story is so weird. Journal Fragment. I did a diary. I finally got hired as a scrivener. And for the Delta Times 2, oh my god. All the world's information flows through a newspaper, a river of facts alongside a paper water wheel. An endless procession of scoop, scoop, scoop as the journalists all dashed about the world investigating, uncovering, and breaking news. What better way for me to carry out my mission? I thought about this a, lo a lot, and everyone has some fact they're hiding. Vast sums of knowledge locked in knockings in the world over. But how to crack open these repositories and acquire those tasty secrets within? That's the rub, of course, as I am now. I doubt that I have the dexterity to pick any of those cranial locks. I was raised in isolation, always out of the loop, hiding quietly on the outskirts of society. There's a positive way to spin that, though. I spent all the time that I wasn't talking to people, observing them. Here's what I learned. People let their guard down around cute little animals. A scowling guard captain will play cuddly coo with an adorable puppy and soon confess all his gripes to the precious thing. And so I will become the puppy. I'll, wake, I'll wag my little doggy tail, act the part of a friendly little non-threatening furball, and slide right into people's confidences. My brother may be the soaring eagle with his bird's eye view, but I'll be a sharp eye pound keeping my nose to the ground and sniffing out every last detail I can find. You are Kazan... sister? Oboro sister? Must be purged. I'm just getting warmed up! My oldest memory is... Crimson, a spray of bright red droplets and a harrowing scream, a crowd fleeing in all directions, and enemy soldiers mercilessly cutting down innocents. Some of them even laugh as they did it. Amidst this, I was a stone. Still in my tender years, I neither cry nor wept nor cowered, but merely watched the chaos unfold. Being raised in a war-torn land does things to an impressionable mind, and I suppose something had already broken inside me. I would have died that day, cut down like the rest, were it not for my brother, his cunning car path for us out of this hellish place. My brother is brilliant, so much so that the enemy king spared him if he would serve, yet despite his genius, despite how shrewd the plans he proposed were in their attempts to avoid bloodshed, the blood always flowed. Human steal, they kill, they take and they take and they take. Lives, possessions, land, is a state of our nature, a simple fact of our existence. My brother and I have seen so much together, and we both reached the same conclusion. The world doesn't deserve to see another dawn. The life of man is nasty, brutish, and ugly. Why not make it short? I need her on our side, and I need you to convince her that's a good idea. My brother's face was flush as he handed me a, the letter addressed to Rai Mei. Perhaps he would be in his cups. I didn't need to ask him why he would be celebrating the fundraising in Montwise was going swimmingly. On my way home, I spotted Hickory. He's the key to everything in Ku, and if our machinations go according to plan, my brother will get what he's after. I doubt Hickory has a clue who I am. Another tactic proposed by brother Dears. No prior familiarity with me will help move things along down the line. But though Hickory doesn't know anything about me, I certainly know a lot about him. Hickory has another side to him, a second personality that my brother says was born from his family's cursed lineage, somewhere in the past. Clan Ku's blood mingled with that of the infamous Archma Archmage Darkas, sparking a history of war and sacrifice, a more odious bloodline I do not know. 
as I passed the Korean street, for a moment I felt as if our eyes met. His gaze was steady and true, just as it was when he was a boy. How had that bright spark in his eyes not dim over time? He had seen the same horrors I had, been through the same terrible war. This is bad. Hickory was captured before I had the chance to deliver my brother's letter to Rai Mei. If Hickory is killed, it will ruin everything and we'll have to start over from scratch. Clan Mei calls the fortress of Stormhale its home, coldest place in Celestia, and I hate it. Time is of the essence, yet this frigid blizzard is battering me about like a leaf in the wind. If only I could take two steps without being blown three back. By the time I finally reach Stormhale, Hickory had already been released. I can only assume he managed to sway Rai Mei on his own. I handed my overdue missive to one of Rai Mei's retainer and quickly put the chilly place behind me. Oswald is sentenced to life imprisonment. It took me a moment to process the judge's verdict. I blinked, doubting my ears. What was going on here? He was supposed to be executed, wasn't he? I ran as fast as I could to find Harvey. I should have known that swine had stuffed leaves into the judge's pocket to bribe him into that decision. Why? I want him to see the power of my perfected magic. That's his reason. The blighted fool. Pride. Worthless pride. We need the Book of Demons complete. What if Oswald somehow finds a way to interfere? When I gave my report to my brother, he simply said, just watch this spectacle unfold. Apparently, my brother had already taken Harvey's massive ego into account when he made his contract with the man. If that's the case, then I suppose this isn't a problem after all. Regardless, I should hurry and gather what information I can about Frigid Isle. Oh my god. Oh, this is seven. Harvey has left for Dust Ruin Shrine. The remains of Archmage Dark Cast will provide the final piece that Harvey needs. The Book of Demons will soon be complete. I found a nice cozy place to conceal myself and sure enough, Oswald showed up. Just as predicted, the two fought it out and I was able to retrie retrieve the Book of Demons in the wake of their battle. There was one surprise, however. Harvey escaped alive. What was that bright flash of magic? A glimpse of a force that made dwarf even that of the Book of Demons? That girl, does she have some special power within her? I conceal myself among the chattering students and slip into Harvey's lecture. The Book of Demons is nearly complete, so he was in a jovial mood. When I saw my chance, I gave Harvey the news. Oswald had tried to escape Frigid Isle and died in the attempt. I thought the news would throw his high spirits off a cliff, but instead he just started giggling. It was creepy. When he finally settled down, he merely said, I need to prepare for my guest's arrival, and vanished back into his laboratory, humming cheerfully all the while. It's like he thinks Oswald is alive. Is Oswald alive? It cannot be, and yet, if so, then he will come here to find Harvey and seek his vengeance. Wait, this could be perfect. I doubt Harvey will honor our agreement and hand over the Book of Demons without a fuss. If I can set those two against each other, it might create the perfect opportunity to slip in and swipe the book. I wonder if my brother had predicted this too. Out of my way. Oh, this is creepy. Like the revelations? My turn. It's crazy. <laughs> So this should be 8. Oswald entrusted the girl Elena to his assistant before setting off on a journey. Like Alpates, the blood of the Lumina family runs in Elena's vein. Who is Alpates again? I'll need to continue monitoring her to watch for suspicious signs. Day after day, Elena sits at her desk and pours herself into her studies. A diligent girl, I suppose, but I'm curious as to why her brow sometimes wrinkles and she cradles her head in her hands. Still, her eyes are bright and her gaze seemingly set on some happy goal far off in the distance. A marked difference from when I saw her in Harvey's company. There was only worry and fear in her eyes then. My heart nearly leaped out of my throat when I heard that assistant's voice suddenly ring out behind me. Can I help you, miss? I immediately turned and tried to distract and disassemble with my tried and true cover story. Can I interest you in a newspaper subscription? She smiled then, eyes warm, but I sensed a keen suspicion burning deep within those friendly eyes. I will not underestimate her again. No one else has ever noticed me when I didn't want to be found. I'll need to abandon my surveillance. Too risky. Besides, I've seen nothing suspect in all the time I've watched Alina. Might as well move on to more important matters. 
Well, here I am in Canelbrine. Word is that I can find someone who has the lost pages of the Books of Knights original manuscript. Caldina, captain of the Secret Guard, seems to be moving as Arcanet predicted and assembling these pages. There's a potential problem, however. A nosy inquisitor named Temenal seems to have caught wind of all this. Arcanet has our eyes on him, but I can only pray he doesn't make any problem for us. I'll need to be careful not to draw his attention too. The Book of Night is close to be fully restored. Once it is, I'll need to move quickly to retrieve it and fulfill my mission. Allying myself with Arcanet was merely the easiest means to that end. My brother did tell me to be wary of her, however, he was quite forceful about it. I wonder why. Oh my god. Aldina, captain of the Sacred Guard, is driven by lust for vengeance. To achieve that end, she seeks to make the power of shadow her own, and with the restored Book of Night in hand, she set out for the Twilight Shrine. Her naive dream of avenging her people will never become reality. Why, you ask, dear diary? Because the right Arcanet taught her is purposely flawed. So there I was, hiding in the shadows of the Twilight Shrine and waiting for the perfect opportunity. Lo and behold, Caldina's right went awry, and she transformed into the most hideous form. No one told me I'd have to deal with some horrible monster. This is above my pay grade. Luckily, I had no need to fear that Temena showed up and handled that Caldina problem for me. I suppose Arcanet was behind his well-timed arrival. What a puppet master. Bravo. I finally understand why my brother warned me to keep an eye on her. I slipped down to the ritual site after Temenos made his exit and retrieved the Book of Night. All that's left is to combine with the Book of Demons and we'll be able to complete the Dark Blood Grimoire. Oh my god, that's how it's all connected, isn't it? Here I am, Grand Old Timberane, just in time for the coronation ceremony. Word on the street is that an apothecary named Trousseau is going to rain on the parade with a storm infused with shadow energy. His goal, and I quote, is to extend a hand to save all in need. What a nice notion. Let's rewind the clock. It was one year ago that Trousseau lost hope in the future and started uh, down his this path. He was out gathering a medicinal herb when he stumbled into Lost Seed. There he met Claude, who gave him the Book of Night. Claude was disappointed with the encounter, it seems. He had swayed Trousseau to his side but couldn't persuade an apothecary in the man's company. With a regretful sigh, he told me that this other apothecary's eyes were filled with a motherly strength, deep wells of kindness that bellied a sense of fierce determination. What was her name again? Ah yes, Casty. She stopped Trousseau, saw the people of Timber into safety, and even dealt with the poison rain. As if that wasn't enough, she also managed to make up a medicine that could combat the shadow on the spot. Claude's intuition was right. Cassidy is someone to keep an eye on. My brother will need to know that we have another dangerous potential wrench in our plans. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh no. My brother made a deal with Harvey. Proud the Book of Demons, an evil tome said to be imbued with the magic of Darkest himself. Why you ask? Well, dear diary, because we needed to restore the lost Dark Blood Grimoire. The rub here is that neither my brilliant brother nor even Claude knows how to make this tome. Thus, they need Harvey. The one thing my brother does know is that the remains of Darkest are a key component. When I shared that vital tip at Harvey smiled, that's all I needed. It sounds like he was already most of the way there. He's a valuable asset, so we'll do everything we can to assist him. Harvey has an unhealthy obsession with a scholar named Oswald. No, let's call it what it is. A severe inferior inferiority complex. Harvey told me he would gladly give up the dawn if it meant he could best the man. We let Harvey read the Book of Night in order to pull him into our intrigues. But honestly, I think it wasn't necessary. That bottomless well of envy in his gut properly manipulated would likely have been motivation enough. Besides, I don't trust him. No normal person can fathom that twisted mind of his. Where's 12? Okay, this is 12. I met a merchant today in Clockbang, an honest fellow with a laughing eyes named Partitio. He's boasted that he will rustle up 80 billion leaves and buy the rights to the steam engine from his current owner, Mr. Brock. Then he'll give the technology away to everyone. When pressed on why, he said things like, this should be shared uh, with the whole world. Partitio confuses me. If I can borrow that ruthless rock's world, it is human nature to take from others and give unto oneself. Despite his noble declaration, I'm sure Partitia will prove himself no different from the other slime. Greed and self-interest will win out in the end, they always do. Still, I'm vaguely curious on 
to how this story will play out. I'll follow this part to show though. I'll keep my expectation low. Placing your fate in others only gets you betrayed in the end. Partitia's gone and done it. He has gone and done it. He's humbled Brock and actually wrestled the rights to the steam engine from the greedy tycoon. Still, that's nothing compared to what he did next. He actually gave it away, just as he said he would. He's lived up to that grandiose statement and then some. The heat of his passion even melted Brock's icy heart. And I didn't think that the desert sun was hot enough to do that. So taking a step back, what Patricio did is impossible, unimaginable, inconceivable. I've observed countless people in my time and to date, every one of them is motivated to varying degrees by self-interest. People are always willing to step on others to achieve their own interests, but Partitio, is it truly different? Is he someone who can at last transform this dark, ugly world into something wonderful? What do you think, brother? We're missing 13. Howdy there, friend! Bring it on! Welcome to my humble castle. That was how he, he greeted me when I arrived in Lost Seed. Before he took me on a casual stroll through that rotting mausoleum of a town, I struggled not to gag on the stench of death and decay. All the while, him smiling and breathing deep as if taking in the airs of tranquil Monte Meadow. This ghastly man's name is Claude, and he is the descendant of the infamous Archmage Dark Cass. It is said that his notorious grandfather gave him a taste of the blood of the malevolent god of darkness Vide, frighteningly enough, while he was still in the womb. As a result, the man is blessed with eternal youth. With the blood of Dark Cass and Vide within his veins, Claude's fate was to become the Dark God's vessel, and yet he rejected his destiny and instead chose to pass that honor on to its offspring. For our part, we don't care who the vessel is, just that we have one. Claude, however, seem Claude, however seems to have preferences in the matter. Preferences, huh. <laughs> The man sired countless children with countless women and set his progeny at each other's throats. To the bloody victor goes the ultimate spoils. I shivered as he locked me up and down. His, as he looked me up and down, his eyes seemed to pierce my very soul. It was as if he was seeking to plant a murderous seed inside me too. When he handed me the dark blood staff, he told me that the woman who stole it for him has a lot of potential. His words. My purpose in Lost Seeds fulfilled, I hurried out out of there. I cannot wait to hand the staff over to Arcanet and let her handle the Cathedral's sacred flame. We're missing 13. Dear Diary, today I met with Petricor, the woman known as Dark Hunter. I would introduce her to Professor Harvey several years ago at Arcanet's request. She was talkative today and had this to say, I met Arcanek when I was young and it was then that I swore myself to her service. Ever since, I have hunted for her and her alone, even slaying the legendary monster known as the Guardian of the First Flame at her behest. Sometimes I hunted people too, like the time I came to possess the Dark Blood bow. Once again, my lady has use of me and so I shall gladly obey. I nodded along, and when she was finished, she showed me a monster, this beast, which she had captured on Totohaha, looked out at me with eyes filled with loathing for all that walk on this earth. I asked her what it was, and she told me the result of years of brutal conditioning and a healthy dose of Harvey science for good measure. The result, an abomination crafted to a repeated and horrifying experiment. I nodded again, a soul this steep in despair would surely prove to be a great source of power. It seems that leaving the flame of Totohaha in her care should prove no issue. Yes, 13. Okay, we have all. I cannot believe it. How did Partitio turn that economic desert of a town into a hopping commercial hub? That business idea of his was inspired. I must admit that watching all Ron's department store comes to life woke something warm inside me. I told Partitio that the world's filled with people groaning under the weight of a thousand problems. It's fresh idea like this that brings a ray of joy into troubled lives. For once, I really truly meant what I said. I should never have poured my heart out in public like that. I suppose my declaration was proof that he's cracked my emotional defenses and convinced me to <laughs> believe in him. In my defense, he's really something else. Before I knew it, I was promising to help. True it is, I'm excited to see what magic he'll pull out of his partitio hat next. 
guess what, dear diary, this is the first time I've ever helped someone for something that wasn't directly related to my mission. Let me stop for a moment and also appreciate the fact that he convinced the, the Alron to invest 80 billion leaves in him. 80 billion. The question is, will Partitio prove to be a man of integrity? Will he really use those leaves to help the world? And not just to line his own pockets? Just a little bit longer, only a bit, mind. I find myself needing to see what he does next. Ori, of course, Oboro Ori. Here of all places, have I stumbled upon a scoop once again? Why, I believe I have. So this is behind the behind the wall that Temenos had the discovery of. I'm glad that's done. There's no need to keep up this cloying facade. To wear the mask of a chipper, unflappable scrivener. No. Now I bring an end to this dark, wretched world. To liberate its people from their pain, their suffering, and their hatred. Just like I swore to you, brother. Together. We will usher in the night. I kept a close eye on the travelers. All while my allies and I worked behind the scenes. Until at last, I found the book I sought. The Dark Blood Grimoire. With it, I will smother the sacred flames. That they will never again light the way for the dawn. I offer this gift of blood. May the flames turn cold and dark. You sacrifice yourself? <sighs> Just like Petricor. Gods. Who was it that drew the line between them? The blessed, the accursed, us, them. Articio, would that we had ever met. I'm sorry, brother. The light of the sacred flame indicated the southeast direction. Ori, I heard from an apothecary in town. A woman was found collapsed near the sacred flame and brought there for treatment. Hmm? She had brown hair and wore a cap, much like a scrivener. After she regained consciousness, she simply vanished. That's Ori, it's gotta be. But if that's true, then what save her? It appears her wounds fell just short of being fatal. She must have changed her mind just in the nick of time. She saw the word in walking towards the dawn. Well, I can hazard a guess as to why she hesitated. I believe it was thoughts of you that saved her life. Me? Now don't be ridiculous. Like I would have anything to do with that. Well, no matter. As long as she's alive, all's well. Just where did she wander off to? Yeah. I sure am lucky that you're around to cheer me up, eh? Our journey isn't over. We do well not to waste time to idle conversation. But if you must talk, then perhaps a different topic of conversation would suffice. Oswald, thank you kindly. Oh. Oh. Okay, I think 
that is it for this episode first. I don't know if this is going to be a long battle, but this has been a very long episode. I might cut and combine this with the next battle. I'm not sure. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy. Until next time.